Good morning, Good Samaritan Society. Chaplain Philip Johnson here with our Monday morning video devotion. Our Old Testament reading today is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parent to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so, you may, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. A few thoughts on our passage. Today's reading, as you may have guessed, is the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments appears two places in Scripture, Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. Now, typically, when we encounter institutions or organizations that put in place policies or guidelines or rules, usually those rules um, are often to protect the organization from liability. Um, I worked as a chaplain in a federal prison and we, our actions were um, very, not, not only informed, but dictated by policy. We weren't really able to step outside of policy in terms of how we did things. Um, because if we did it according to the policy, then we couldn't be held uh, liable um, if an inmate was to challenge the way in which something happened. So as long as we were abiding by policy, we could stay out of jail ourselves. But interestingly, with this passage, with this list of rules, they really seem to be for the benefit of the person who abides by them. Um, and really, there's, there's kind of two sections. Um, the first four commandments have to do with our relationship with God. And then the next six have to do with our relationship with other people, with the community. Uh, and it seems like with all of these, um, God is, is very clear on what his desire is, what God's desire is. But ultimately, I think that all of these commandments are ultimately for the benefit of the person who abides by them. Um, scripture lays out a pretty compelling case that uh, an individual who moves towards God, who invests in a relationship with God, um, is continually renewed and strengthened by that relationship. So, commandments, uh, having no other gods before God, not making idols, uh, not misusing the name of the Lord, and keeping the Sabbath holy, that all seems to be in the interest of maintaining and growing an individual's relationship with God, a relationship that continues to yield 10,000 times uh, what is invested in it. Um, and God even alludes to that, that um, he punishes children uh, to the third and fourth generation for the sins of the parents, but blesses 
the generations to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So not only is it in the interest of the individual to keep the commandments, it also continues to pay dividends uh, to that individual's children and children that children's children and children's children children and on and so forth. The second set of the commandments tend to do with our relationship with other people, beginning with our relationship with our parents, not killing anyone, not committing adultery, not stealing, not lying about other people, and generally not being uh, jealous or covetous of our neighbor's, um, anything our neighbor has, whether that be his family, her property, et cetera, et cetera. I think we have a tendency to think of the Ten Commandments as this kind of burdensome or overbearing list of rules, you know, the, the, the two stone tablets that are kind of backbreaking in their weight. Um, but I think ultimately these Ten Commandments are for our good. Uh, in essence, they're not necessarily stones that we have to carry, but a foundation that we're able to stand on. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you that you give us guidelines. Uh, you teach us a way to live that is better, a way to live that is ultimately for our good. Help us to continue to lean into the, the commandments, especially the ones that sometimes are difficult for us. Um, help us to, to honor you and help us to honor each other. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day.